scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 10, verses 33 to 37. I'm going to extend uh, the scripture passage a bit more than what you have in uh, your bulletins. But a certain Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, the one who showed mercy toward him. And Jesus said to him, go and do the same. Harry, may God be with you as you bring word from God to us. Uh, month or so, you've been, uh, <coughs> you were heading your bulletins a little question air kind of thing. You have a question. And uh, I think by divine providence, um, someone asked this question. In a world with transatlantic flights and Skype and Twitter and cell phones, etc., our world is shrinking rapidly. Looking at Jesus' command to <clears throat> love our neighbor, who is my neighbor? When I have 1,000 friends on Facebook. Put another way, is it possible to love everyone? It's a great question. Um, and it's a question I think many of us are pondering about these days. I've been asking myself this question, and I've been asked this question a number of times before, and um, I'm struggling to answer it for myself. <clears throat> I have 896 friends on Facebook, and I know most of them in real life, we might say, they're my families, and they're my friends. The rest I have pastored or collaborated with in some kind of ministry. So it really shouldn't surprise me that I have 896 friends on Facebook. And it shouldn't surprise you. That's what happens when one lives in multiple countries volunteers for nonprofit organizations and pastors congregations some of them large for more than 20 years most of the time all of these relationships on Facebook are, are life giving and they provide me with a sense of history and a sense of community and a sense of support I love all these people but I admit that sometimes maintaining all of these relationships on a computer screen can feel overwhelming. It doesn't feel overwhelming when things are going well in people's lives. That's nice, I get to celebrate with others. But when things are not going well, when 
sickness or some sadness or tragedy happens in the life of someone that I love, it does feel overwhelming. I ask myself, what can I do? What should I do? How is it possible for me to do something at such a great distance and with my limited time and resources? I truly struggle with this, often in agonizing ways. To be specific, recently a ministry colleague of mine lost his wife. She died after being hit by a car while riding on a bicycle. You may have read about it. And I struggled with what to do. I agonized over the pain in his life and my choices on how much to help. And I made my choices in that situation and in others like like it based on my understanding of the passage that we just read this morning. So I wanted to share how I understand this story. And I'm sure that you understand it in in similar and in diverse ways. The story of the Good Samaritan is familiar to most of us. The story is Jesus' answer to what we often understand as a self-righteous man who's seeking to justify his exclusionary behavior of withholding good from certain people that he knew he needed to help. But that really puts a negative slant on his question, and it colors Jesus' tone in our minds. It makes me imagine Jesus answering in sharp, and in harsh ways. So I prefer to imagine my favorite teacher in school asking the same question. The one I loved, the one that loved to teach the subject that they were teaching. You know the one, right? They took such care in making sure that they really understand and understood what they were teaching us. They weren't just teachers. They were also lifelong learners. I see you sitting in this room. I see us asking these kinds of questions to Jesus today, really wanting to know the answer. So that's... That's who I imagine asking the question. A teacher. Someone who's taken care for many years to really understand God's word. And now they see their opportunity to deepen that understanding by asking Jesus, who is more than a teacher. He's like a, like a teacher. Teachers. And he can really help us understand how to deal with some of these really, really hard questions. Like, I know I'm called by God's word to love my neighbor and to do those things in tangible ways. But there are just so many needs and I have so little to give and I know I cannot do it all. So Jesus, help me understand who I am supposed to help so I can be faithful to my God and then I'll do that and then I can be at peace with God with my neighbor and with myself please Jesus teach us tell us what to do so Jesus says let me tell you a story Let me tell you a story. Just like every wise person does when they are trying to answer very complex and very difficult questions. Why? Well, because it helps us get our minds around these things better. Story gives us the opportunity to identify with the characters in the story. It allows us to imagine what we might do in similar situation and it allows us to add our own twists and interpretations and understandings. 
That's just to name a few things. So I'm going to share here how I understand the story that Jesus is telling as if he were telling me the story in response to my question. My question of how can I responsibly live out my convictions to love the Lord my God with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my mind and with all my strength and love my neighbor as myself when there are so many neighbors and there's only one of me. And the first thing I notice is the person that I want to be like and the persons that I don't. I want to be like the Good Samaritan. I want to be like him or, or maybe her if Jesus were telling the story today. You know, the Samaritan is the one who surprises everybody in the story. He's the underdog. The one who we would not expect to be the hero, but he is. The one that makes the surprising good choices in the story. The one that when they do what they do, it makes us gasp. It makes us smile. It makes us cry. That is who I want to be. And I think the Good Samaritan is who you want to be in the story. Am I wrong? I don't, I don't think I'm wrong. And I don't want to be like the other two who pass by that poor guy on the road. I'm not sure that it, it's that they don't really care. It's just that they don't stop and help. And I have been those two people many times. Too many times, really. I passed by the guy on the side of the road who had a flat tire and the lady with the baby in her arms as I stopped at a street light in the city. I changed the channel when I saw the infomercial about the tragedies in Africa. And I, I turned the page of a magazine to, to look at a new computer and saw the article for Compassion International and I got frustrated and I turned the page I have not written a post on Facebook to a friend who just diagnosed with a life threatening event and I have done all of these things for very good reasons I tell myself I'm too busy I have appointments I don't have extra money I am tired I am overwhelmed by all these needs. Never because I didn't care. Always because I was looking at all of the needs and my own limitations individually. I have been those two, the Levite and the priest, and I don't want to be them. Jesus, help me understand. Who is my neighbor? Who am I supposed to help? so I can be faithful to you. Jesus' answer is here embedded in this story. His answer to me is, help the ones you can. The ones that are near enough to you that you can touch, help them. When you can, and you know when you can, and when you can, stop when you pass by them on the road and help them. Give them a touch. Allow for a few detours in your journey. You know, it is okay to be late for a meeting or two because you've helped someone. 
people will generally understand. And when you stop, just offer what you have. Offer what you can. Just do what you can. And then try to get them somewhere that they can be safe and you can get help in helping them. He takes the guy to an inn. And he says, look, I've got two wages here I can spare. Two hundred dollars, maybe, maybe less, I don't know. And he says, I can't do this all by myself. I have other things that I genuinely need to do. I was not planning on helping this person. So I need help too. I need help in helping. And then, you know, he just releases the guy into the care of others who have the time and the ability to care for them. You know, that's the most important thing I learned in this passage. I can't do it all. I need help. We need help in helping others. We need an end. And we need an innkeeper. And for me, in my life, the inn and the innkeeper is the church and the people of God in the church. It's a simple understanding for me, one that frankly I never noticed. Ever. But what a gift. What a gift to know that we don't have to, to carry it all. What a gift to know that um, it's okay to do what we can and then release those needs into a place that is able to to give that care and that help. It may not be as transforming for you as it was for me, but I find it profound. And it makes, it somehow makes this huge, immense need of this huge, immense world more bearable. God only asks us to do what we can. And recognize our own limitations. And be willing to ask for help too and to collaborate with others. It's all the church is. And when we do that, there is equality. And no one is overburdened. That's what I learned. You probably are learning other things. You know, we have innkeepers here too. One of the innkeepers we call a treasurer. We don't often think about it, but our treasurer has a huge part in making sure that the two days of wages that we give to the inn and to the innkeeper is used to help the people that we bring to the inn as good Samaritans. Now, if we do the math, what the guy gave is about 28% of his weekly salary. 
or maybe if we if he did this once a month, it's about 6%, maybe, of what he made a month. We don't really know all of that. It doesn't really matter. But either way, it's a pretty big gift to give to a stranger, someone that we don't know, just to say, here, take care of this guy. But that's what he does. And I think, you know, we ought to honor the work of the innkeeper. We ought to honor the work of the innkeeper. We don't do that very often, I don't think. So we'd like to do that right now. The two Daves, Dave Snyder and Dave Strong, who are the chairs of our stewardship commission, are going to come up here for a moment. They have a couple things they'd like to share. Stewardship is a, a whole lot more than giving money. There is the giving of ourselves. There's the giving of our talents. There's the giving of our time. And those things all comprise stewardship. And true stewardship is giving without thought for what I'm going to get in return. There is no quid pro quo in stewardship. Someone who has exhibited that for many years in this congregation is Kathy Brubaker, and I'd like to ask Kathy to come up here. For many years, Kathy fulfilled the role of treasurer for this congregation. And I worked with her probably for only two of those years. But what a good support we as a church had and we as a commission had from Kathy. Her steadiness is one way to describe it. Her way of communicating, thoughtful, deliberate, um, and her dependability, and the spirit in which she contributed meant a great deal to me and to the congregation. And so, Kathy, I'd like to recognize you with just a small token of our appreciation for all your service to this congregation, and thank you. forgot something. Um, I, I really didn't. Um, a word about Thanksgiving Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, November the 18th. It is um, a day when we historically vote on the church budget. It's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Um, we all have a great deal to be thankful for. But on that day, I want to tease all of you a little bit and encourage you to be here to participate in a way that I don't think you've participated in church before. And if you have, you probably should have prayed for forgiveness. <laughs> but on, on Thanksgiving Sunday, we want to encourage you to be here and to take part in a special, both symbolic and yet practical exercise. And in particular, I really, really want to see all of the children here and have them participate as well. Thank you. I know what's going to happen on that day. And it is really exciting for me. We will, um, of course, this is a teaser. And you will, you will not be disappointed. 
So you should spread the word that something marvelous and wonderful is going to happen on that day. Invite as many people as you can to fill this place up and they won't be disappointed. They will walk away with something in their hand that will excite them greatly. Jesus finishes his story by allowing the person who asks the question to also give the answer to their own question. What a wonderful teacher. What a wise man to allow the person who asks asks the question to, to answer it then for themselves based on what they have heard and experienced of, of being with Jesus. And so I'm going to answer my own question. Who is my neighbor? How can I handle all of these needs that I know about? What, what do I do? going to do what I can. I'm going to I'm going to show mercy to my neighbor and to myself. I'm going to love my neighbor as I'm loving myself. I'm going to love my neighbor when I can I'm going to help them find their way to the end so I can get help in caring for them. I'm going to show them mercy and love that way. And then I'm going to show myself mercy. I'm going to love myself by getting the help I need because the needs are just too many for me to handle them on my own. And I'm going to ask Jesus how to do that along the way. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you answer that question for yourself. Who is your neighbor?